Hey there YouTube fans, today we are working on a couple of little beat traps and here's why. Carpenter bees, they've been making some holes and so we need some traps. So we're gonna make a trap to put there. We're gonna try to make four of them, but. So I just had some scrap wood laying around, a couple two by fours, and then this two by four that I had ripped from end pieces. So here's what I came up with. So it'll sort of look like this. And I'll put some holes in it and there'll be a channel in the middle for them to come down and I'll just put a tilted top on it. Should be pretty easy. Jar will just screw to the bottom and we'll cut a diagonal on this so that this board can be the top. And then I've also got this scrap. This is a little bit thinner than these, but I'm gonna do the same sort of concept with another. Got a couple other two by fours. So let's get to cutting this one first. None of these cuts are particularly important to be accurate right now. Just getting them close. Because I'm going to glue them in between the other 2 by 4s Alright, so there's the two I'm going to glue between the other two. And I'm going to make one of these tops. Oh, see, there's another B. Six inches wide for this one. So there's my six inch mark. See my laser is on it. That's pretty close. Close enough. I'm gonna go ahead and glue these together. So put glue on these, put them together, clamped them. Then I'll put a lid like this. I'm gonna I'll chop it down here like that. I won't even need a bottom here. The lid will just go straight here and then the jar screwed to it. And you can see it's not exact. It doesn't need to be. Let that dry. All right, so I'm gonna do basically the same thing with this board. Glue these to it. Here I'm only doing one side at a time because I do not have big enough clamps. I only have these clamps that are big enough to do this through all three layers, so these won't get that big. So again, I'm not being exact, just being approximate. Clamp on this side, clamp on that side. Okay, so we want to just spread this out a little bit. All right, that's pretty good. We'll let that dry. Put a couple more clamps on it. Let that dry up. Then we'll put the other side on, the other two by four that goes here. Okay, so the glue is dried on these. We're going to take all this off. next side of this one, the other 2x4 that covers it, and we're going to cut the lid for this one. All right, so I'm gonna put a 20 degree angle on this cut. And I can see my laser is hitting right about there. So I'm hoping that it gets me right at where I'm wanting it to be. This side's pretty much already flat. Let's just, this, this blade's not high enough to cut all the way through. So I'll have to cut part way and then figure out how I'm gonna cut the rest. But this should get us part way there. Oh, that didn't quite do it. So I have to go further over. All right, that's pretty close. Now just gonna cut the rest of that. I think I can do it like this. Got me most of the way. So I just have this little bit left, put it on the other side of 20. There we go. 
that is plenty good enough for what I'm doing. This lid on it like this. And I think I'm gonna go like a little bit more to the front side, like that. I think that'll work. So I measured, we've got about an inch and three sixteenths on each side. It's actually closer to an inch and five sixty-fourths, but this is woodworking. So what I've done is I've got a little bit of an outline down here. So I know where to spread the glue. We can just let that sit as is, let it dry out. So once this dries, we will finish up with it. And when this dries, we will cut it into similar shapes as this one. Then we can put holes. I'm gonna put probably maybe two holes on this side, one hole on the back, and maybe one on each of these sides. I haven't really decided yet what I'm gonna do. And then there'll be no bottom here, just the, the lid screwed to it. And then maybe we'll set it out, try to capture and rehome some carpenter bees. All right, this is dried. We're gonna take this on apart. This one's a little bit different. We'll only be able to put holes here, but here's one of the jars. This is actually a, this jar is a Lillian Sweet Hawaiian Glaze. This is made locally and that stuff is good. So you can get it facebook.com slash lillians.sweet.hawaiian. And that's amazing on chicken. start just with a straight cut just to give myself an even edge down here at the bottom. One of the boards didn't quite go all the way to the end here. All right, evened it all up nicely. So I want to make three traps out of this and we've only got this distance. So these two ends are going to be the bottoms and then I'll make one cut like this that'll be tops of two and another cut There'll be a bottom here and then a top like that probably. I want to try to get it, get them about equal. So one thing that's kind of easier here. All right, so we can measure this side and we know this is right at six inches. And then the counting for this width, which is right at four inches. So we come here to four inches and measure and we've got seven and a half. So this is, this slant creates an inch and a half additional distance. This is 20, just over 21 inches long. I'm going to slice it at 21. So then what we need to do is make diagonals. Now, being that this is 21 inches long, I can get easily seven inches. However, that diagonal, if I use this at the bottom and this is the bottom, I'm going to have two diagonals, which will leave one of these without a flat bottom. So then I have to cut that flat bottom off and then I'll lose an inch and a half. So if I divide that inch and a half by two and move these marks, three quarters inches each way hoping I can get close to equal sizes for each one of them so we need to divide inch and a half by three all right so dividing inch and a half by three that's basically six quarters divide six by three two quarters right half inch so we're gonna go six and a half and fourteen and a half so will this give me Six and a half, six and a half there, and then one. That gives me a little bit of extra room, so this is close enough. Turn this at 20 degrees. And I want this dead center. Didn't quite cut through, so we'll get that in a minute. Let's go on to this one. Back on zero, cut this end. Flip this, finish it off. Blade lined up nicely. So now this one needs to be cut straight. There's three of those. All right, I got a drill bit here now. Uh, what size? It is 2764, so I just grabbed the first one that looked about right. Just gonna put a little hole. 
Doesn't matter quite where. Just get it closer. There we have it. Pretty easy. I think I'm just going to do those two for now. We'll see how that does. I might for the next one go a little bit smaller hole. I think I'm going to experiment with the hole sizes a little bit. See which one works best. All right, so now I've got the lid here. I'm just going to use a Dremel with a cutoff disc to this hole. We're just trying to make it approximately the same size. Doesn't have to be perfect. Use eye protection, which I'm not going to do. a couple little holes and drill some screws now, the only other thing you want to do is kind of get that centered up so that it doesn't look silly you know because you're gonna have a jar hanging down from there and there we have it all except for something up top to hang it so I've got an eighth inch drill bit some wire I'm just gonna find the center here and then put the hole in the center and push this up through the bottom. All right, so make your life easy. Feed it through this way. So figure out about how much wire you want and then cut it. But make it a little bit longer than you actually want it because on the end, fold it around. Well, don't actually do that yet. You don't want to fold it around yet. All right, so you got the wire about how long you want it. Preferably uh, make it taller so that you can go in all the way through and then you'll tie it on this end making sure not to pull the other end out. Just going to put a couple loops to make it so it can't pull out. Right? And now you can hang it. You've got you make a loop like this on the top of it, bringing this over and then folding it around, clamping it <laughs> and clamping it down in itself. Now you can hook it to whatever you want. That's not going to come loose. This is a fairly heavy gauge, I think a 12 gauge wire. So that will work just fine. Okay, now I just need to make tops for these last few. Let's see if I can maybe squeeze three out of it. I doubt it. I like to keep these little giblets. They make it a lot easier for changing tires. Uh, I use them to hold the rubber down on the bottom bead and on the top bead while seeding that final piece of the top bead makes life easier. mount this uh, first beehive right up here where a bee has been drilling his hole. So I've just got a little drywall screw and a washer fit through here. Right. Hopefully we capture some bees.